Hey everybody, we're going to be talking about the Azure news this week and I'm also going to be sharing some of my thoughts around teamwork and how you can translate your hobbies into something you use in your career. So stay tuned. Hey everybody and welcome to another weekly update with myself, Sarah Lean. I am back indoors today because it is utterly freezing outside. We have had snow um, most of the week. Um, this side of Scotland has not been hit as bad as the East Coast. Um, the East Coast have had some horrendous snow. I've seen photos from Lisa Clark, who is Lisa at the Edge, and their snow um, in the east of Scotland is much worse than we've had. Um, but what we've had recently in the last couple of days is a really hard frost. So it's been proper freezing um, um, here in Scotland. Um, I know if you look at some parts of Canada, this will still be shorts and t-shirt for some Canadians. Um, but it's definitely been a lot colder and I'm not um, willing to go outside and lose some fingers while I'm holding the camera and talking to you guys. So I am inside today um, to tell you the Azure news. And there's not been a lot of Azure news, to be honest, this week. I think the one piece of Azure news that I picked out is that there's a new version in public preview of Power BI Embedded. Now, Power BI Embedded is not something that I've really used. I've, I've, I know about it. I've used Power BI before, but not Power BI Embedded. What Power BI Embedded is, it allows you to take the technology of Power BI and embed some of the graphics and capabilities of Power BI into an application that you may be developing. So say you're writing, a, I don't know, a mobile application for customers and you want to give them in some insights into maybe social media. So maybe your, your application is social media kind of scheduling and publication and, and helping people manage all of the social media accounts that we have today, you might want to pull some of that information together using Power BI to show them trends and analysis, something like that. Basically, what you can do is take those visuals and the data from Power BI and embed it into your application so that your application users don't need to know about Power BI. They don't have to go off into another portal um, or another application part to sign into Power BI. They don't need a Power BI license. It's just embedded in that app for them and gives them the insights. And it's also much better from you because you don't have to go off and find another application that does all that kind of fun and awesome kind of analysis and data um, reporting that Power BI does. Um, so you, you can use something that you're familiar with and again, embed it into your app. So we've got a newer version, um, Embedded Gen 2, I believe is what it's been called. It's in public preview. So there's a number of features there. One of the ones that I remember reading about was that if you're scaling, there's no downtime with Gen 2. I think that was an issue with Gen 1. If you were scaling up or down, there was potentially an outage and a blip when you did that. So Gen 2 seems to um, take away that downtime so definitely worth looking at, definitely worth having a go at if you are, are doing some kind of application development and want to embed Power BI um, into it. So definitely check that out and see if it's useful to you. And if there's anybody that's used Power BI embedded and wants to get in touch and, and tell me that I've, I've completely told you about the product wrong or missold it, then give me a shout and let me know um, what your thoughts are. So for those of you that have maybe watched videos of me before in the past, you may have seen that occasionally I get some bleed through from my um, blinds and through my window. And you'll sometimes have seen the shadows maybe appearing on the background here. And um, this, this room is amazing because it gets natural light all the time. The sun basically rises in the east, which is over there, falls around all day um, and finishes in the west. So it's great get lots of natural light um, and it's a dead bright room um, but the problem is that it shines in here at the most appropriate unappropriate times when I'm filming and um, so what I've recently done is actually fitted a blackout blind to kind of stop that um, I'm still getting a bit and um, you can probably see I'm still getting bits down if I point to the right bit um, it's still getting bits down the side and, and stuff but it's much much better so I'm hoping that it's um, going to help and I actually presented yesterday at the Nordic Virtual Summit with Thomas Moore, my teammate, and 
I noticed that it was a lot cooler in here because problem again with this room is that I get a lot of heat in this room because the sun's shining in every day. So in the summer it is actually quite bad. Even though I said it's freezing outside, the sun is quite high and quite bright today um, and yesterday. So yesterday when I was presenting, it was actually a lot cooler in here because the blackout blind is stopping some of that heat come in. So I'm not ending up really, really warm and really toasty during my presentation when all my lights are on at the same time. So I am very pleased with that bit of DIY that I've done um, within this office space as well. So something that I've been thinking about recently is teamwork and how I have used my experience as a sport and a hobby that I do in my personal time and my own time has actually helped me within my career. So many, many moons ago, they demonstrated at the Winter Olympics curling, which is a sport on ice. And I fell in love with it on the TV and wanted to try it out. So I went to an open day at my local ice rink and I've been hooked ever since. And that was well over 20 years ago right and I've had some fantastic successes I've met some amazing people I've had some frustrations I've even had knee surgery I think because of curling um but it's taught me a lot it's taught me a lot about how to deal with people how to be a leader and um, how to be a team player communication trust all all kinds of things and I wanted to share some of that insight because I think as we're working as a globally distributed team, um, I at Microsoft work in a global team. We very rarely get to meet each other in person, pandem pandemic aside. We barely, very rarely get to meet in virtual meetings because of time zone differences as well. And I think even more so, you need to be able to teamwork and you need to be able to communicate better because of, of those challenges. And we're all working remotely, right? Most of us will be working remotely. We might not even have met our teams. I know a few people who have changed jobs during the pandemic and never physically met any of their teammates. So they're having to build up that bond, that trust, that communication um, without actually having to meet anybody, just doing it through IAM and, and, and virtual meetings. So you definitely need to have these skill sets in your tool bag. You definitely need to know that. And curling has taught me that. Curling has taught me how to be a leader and how to be a team player. Curling relies a lot on, yes, the physical element of throwing the stones, of sweeping, of understanding how to judge the ice and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But there's also an element of leadering. Leadering, is that a word? Um, leading. And there's also an element of teamwork. You often play as a four at curling and you each have different roles. I'm the skip, so I'm the captain or the person, the leader of the team. And I like that. That's the role that suits me best, I think, at least. Um, but the, the, the roles are all very equally important. And there's an element of communication, of trust that you have to build up with your team. Um, you need to know when to when someone needs shouted at, when somebody needs a hug, when somebody needs absolutely nothing in order to get them out of their funk or how they deal with something. You need to trust each other that if I'm a skip and I'm making a call about where to put a stone, what ice to give, um, what whether to sweep that stone or not, to make it go further, to stay on its line, my team has to trust me. And if there's no trust, then that's when it starts to fall apart. And I think that's very much the same in our careers, right? You have to be able to communicate well. You have to be able to trust each other. Some people you might never, ever trust in your team. I have worked in some teams where I don't trust the people that I work with. But you need to find out how to communicate with these people at, at the very least. Find out what methods they like. Do they do they prefer emails? Do they prefer written instructions You know, with reminders and to-do lists? Do they prefer verbal instructions? Do you need to give them step-by-step um, -step instructions for some things? Do you need to just let them go? Say, go and do X, Y and Z for me, please. And then they'll go and do it. You need to find that trust and you need to find that communication methodology that works for you and your teammates. Um, and I think a lot of people forget that. They're so dialed down into their own little room, their own little corner of the world, their own objectives, their own goals, that they forget to work with their team. They forget to interact as a team and go forward and, and see the benefit of collaborating Um and I'm all for people to go off and drive their own path and, and dial into what their career goals are, what their personal goals are 
absolutely I'm not saying that you shouldn't have that but you need to find the balance between you being as an individual contributor as an individual aiming towards your goals and also you need to find out how you how much time and energy you spend in your team goals and building that up I often talk about server migrations and migrating to the cloud and how you have to understand how your all your workloads work together, the dependencies those workloads have on each other before you start to migrate. Because if you don't, you're going to find out that you've broken something because you've, you've, you've moved one server into the cloud and a key component of it is now sitting miles and miles away in your own data centre with latency that just can't cope with it. And I think that's how you have to kind of think about your teammates. You're all interdependent. You'll all need each other for something, whether it be digging out a a URL to a tool internally that you've forgotten, you can't find the bookmark for, you can't find the email that was sent out referencing it. And you might have to ask your teammates for that. But if you have no bond with your teammates, if they don't, you know, if you're if they're you're constantly if they're constantly helping you or you're not constantly helping them they're not going to want to help you. Um, And I think that's what you need to be mindful of, that teamwork is very much an important part of your role, Uh, especially if you want to grow. If you want to get promotion, I think you have to learn how to be a team player and you have to be able to be that team leader as well. And curling is a sport that has helped me really dial into that at times when I need to be that individual contributor and when I actually have to dial it down a little bit and be part of the team and work as a team so yeah that's my ramblings for today I'd love to hear if anybody else has any experiences of how a hobby or an extracurricular activity has helped them in their career and and helped them grow um, within their career path as well also love to hear if anybody's a fellow curler um, and enjoys the sport and um, hopefully in 2021 we will get back on the ice and we'll get to play again but who knows um, whatever the future holds we will we'll hit, hit it head on as a team um, so yeah that's my ramblings everybody I hope you've all had a good week and stay safe this weekend I'll catch you next week <laughs>